Okay, this is a Stuart Real steam engine based on a model of an old fashioned engine that was quite common in collieries at one time. It's a vertical engine with the cylinder on the floor and purists will know that that's the correct form for a vertical engine um, and it's very much based as a development on the old beam engines. Um, they're quite an interesting model to make and quite an interesting model to watch run. Um, which I'll show you in a minute, but uh, I'll just point out one or two features of it. Here we have the crankshaft, supported on four steel columns. Carries a drive pulley on the outside edge. Flywheel, followed by a bearing. With an added oil cup for lubrication. This is a balance weight machined out of a solid piece of steel to try and reduce the vibration when the engine's running because it does tend to wobble a bit at speed. Um, there's the eccentric, another bearing and there's the crank. The crank is connected to the connecting rod which is a stirrup shaped connecting rod there which passes astride that support arm which carries a top bearing which supports the piston rod which you can just see there which passes down through into the cylinder and carries the piston at the lowest end as you can see there. It's quite important that this support arm is made fairly accurately because obviously everything's got to align here as well as you've got to have a working clearance between the stirrup rod as it passes each side of that bearing support there. I did actually find in the kit that the steel that was supplied for this stirrup shape connecting rod was actually too narrow and I had to uh, supply a wider piece of steel for, to enable that to be machined out correctly. I also found that this support arm which is supported by four slots in each of these columns um, had been drawn wrongly. Um, the slots were found to be <coughs> as drawn um, one sixteenth of an inch um, but in reality the, the support arm when it's made is um, much narrower than that therefore I had to reduce the depth of these slots to a thirty second of an inch to enable that to fit correctly between those columns so it's something to watch out for and if you ever consider making one you either need to make the support arm a sixteenth of an inch wider that it's drawn, or make the slots narrower, which I did by a 30 second of an inch. That way, you should get away okay. Um, another problem I discovered as well was the valve operating rod, which I can show you there, which is in there going down to through the steam chest. That was um, drawn a quarter of an inch too short, and uh, I actually had to remake that quarter of an inch longer to enable the engine to work. Uh, while we're looking at this you can just see a temporary lash up really for the air supply and also an exhaust pipe um, which just allows the air to clear the, the framework. Um, <clears throat> I will be taking the engine apart again to repaint it. But in the meantime it runs and I'll give you a demonstration of that now. So I'll just set the camera down. Switch the air on and see what happens. There we are. <coughs> Engine chugging away. You can see the interesting motion of the stirrup shaped connecting rod as it passes each side of that support arm. See a little bit of daylight each side. See the piston rod in there as well, bobbing it and down in the middle of the connecting rod. There's a cylinder. See the eccentric bobbing up and down, which operates the valve rod. The flywheel running nice and true. And the pulley there. On the outside edge. 
quite an interesting model to watch, a bit different from the average. You don't seem to see many about. Not quite sure why. Yeah. Running quite well at speed. There we are, the air's running out of the compressor receiver and the engine's gradually slowing down. There we are, coming down to a stop now. That's it, that's fine. So there we are, one Stuart Reel steam engine. Running on compressed air and looking fairly good. Okay, thanks for watching.